Y'all better look out for that marsh girl. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a spoiler talk for Where the Crawdads Sing. Uh, so before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more book videos. Okay, the book Where the Crawdads Sing was originally released in 2018, and it is very popular. Um, the book was one of Reese Witherspoon's book club picks. Um, of course, it has this little sticker. Um, I've never given any thought to her book club. Um, and I did some digging and looking into her book club. And apparently she has like this whole like book of the month club like vibe thing going on, like with a website and like these books that she's picked. And like you can do like book boxes with like items in them. And I was actually kind of surprised, like the book boxes actually look really well put together um, with everything that she like includes in them. But anyway, this book was one of her picks. It got good old Reese's stamp of approval. And I felt like for years, I just could not get away from seeing this book everywhere. It's just like on all of these store shelves and all of these like must read lists. And I was always like, no, <laughs> like I just really hadn't, I didn't really have very much of an interest in reading it. Um, I think it's hard with books that are so hyped up. I'm usually like, ah, I don't know if it's actually going to be as good as like everybody says. Um, but with the movie coming out, I was like, well, you know, I don't know, let's just give it a shot. So I finally read it. So if you don't know, this book centers on Kaya. She is a young woman who is living in the marshes, like slash backwoods of North Carolina. Um, and when she was a young child, she got abandoned by her family. And then she was just on her own, raising herself in this marsh. So this was a bit of like a coming of age story for her. But then there's also this murder mystery intertwined throughout the story. Um, and when Kaya is an adult, she gets accused of this murder of a man that she had been once seeing. So <laughs> I was a little um, knowing the premise and in going into the book. Um, I expected not to like it. I just kept thinking of like this young woman, like raising herself in the marshes, like just I was just I felt like it was very out there and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy reading about this poor child. But after finishing it, um, I do say that I liked it better than I had anticipated, but I do still have problems with it. I do feel like it was well written, but it was predictable and boring at times. So kind of getting into it, the book is split into two parts. So the first part, part one of the book, is about Kaya's childhood. During her childhood, we see in a very short period of time, we see family member after family member abandon her when she is like seven. And that's how the book starts. Her Basically, her mother has a mental break and she leaves the family. And prior to that, Kaya did have several other siblings that had already left. Um, but in the story, she says that she doesn't remember them at all because she was so young when they left. And then she has an older brother, Jody, and he's the only sibling that's left. Um, and she's close with him. And then he decides that he also wants to get away from their piece of shit dad. So basically her entire family left and she's this literal child left with this abusive drunk dad and like, it was just so weird for me, like the entire family just being like, bye, you're on your own kid. Like you got this. I was surprised and I was shocked and I was like, what is going on? So then throughout learning about this, about her and her childhood, throughout also the story, we get little tidbits of learning about this character, Chase Andrews death. And it's an apparent murder. He's found in the marsh under this tall tower that he had apparently either fallen off of or was pushed off of. Um, and we get chapters throughout um, the book regarding this, um, but they're only like a few pages long and they're kind of like thrown in randomly between um, seeing Kaya navigate her childhood. And I 
hated that. <laughs> I felt like mixing in this investigation of the murder was just so disjointed from the story. Like as the reader, I didn't know this character that they're talking about. I had no reason to care about these chapters. Um, it just, I don't feel like it mixed well with being a part of the story. Like they kept, like obviously it was going to lead to something bigger, but the whole time I'm reading it, I'm like, why do I care? So with Kaya's portions, not much time passes. And then Kaya's dad also abandons her, which, <laughs> which he was a piece of shit. So it's like not a hundred percent like a bad thing, but at this point she's around like 10 and she is 100% living alone in the marshes in this shack. And she's having to completely fend for herself. And I do have to say that once Kaya's father actually did leave and didn't come back, the book did get better. I felt like it was more interesting. Um, I liked seeing her do everything on her own and try to learn how to navigate the marshes and um, how to like try and figure out how to make money and like literally feed herself. Um, as bad as it sounds, I didn't find it super believable. Um, but I did find that like reading about her struggle, I thought it was intriguing. Um, like I liked being able to, like, I liked seeing her fend for herself, but at the same time, like, I'm just thinking to myself the whole time, like, like thinking of like children that I know and being like, I don't feel like they would be able to do the things that she's doing in the book as a child. And I don't know if as the, re the reader that's supposed to like make me feel so much more for the character. But for me, it just made me be like, this isn't real. So she wasn't 100% on her own in these backwood marshes. She did have some help from various characters. Um, there was a man jump in and he was this man who ran like this little gas shop on the marsh. And Kaya had made money throughout her childhood by digging up mussels and selling them to him. And he did end up being a really great father figure for Kaya. And I really did love his character. I loved when anytime we got to see him and she interacted with him, I just felt like he was so genuine and caring. Um, and then also his wife, Mabel, helped Kaya along as well with like womanhood and like bringing her clothing and things like that. Um, but even though she did have some support um, from them, she still was 100% living on her own in this marsh. And so since she has been alone, since she was a small child, I do think the author did a really good job of making the reader like really feel Kaya's loneliness. Um, I was like absolutely heartbroken for her. It was hard because I had a I had a str inter internal struggle where like on one end I was so intrigued and I was so heartbroken for her, but on the other end I was like, how realistic is this? But that's just kind of like my thoughts. Like I haven't read like a ton of like coming of age stories about like young children, and so for me I was just kind of like, is this real? Like is obviously it's not real, it's fiction, but like, is this like believable? But since she had been alone for so long, you really got to see like what kind of an effect the isolation had on her personality. She was very awkward and withdrawn and she didn't really know how to behave in like social situations. Um, and so I thought that was very realistic because how would she, how would she know how to behave in those situations? Cause she's been alone her entire life. Um, and then around the time she was 14, she did begin to spend time with a character named Tate. He was a few years older than her. Um, and she did have one interaction with him when he was, when her father was still around. Um, he had been friends with her older brother. Um, but he kind of like resurfaces back into her life when she's a teen. Um, and he teaches her to read, um, because she has not she doesn't go to school. Um, she went to school like one day in her life and everybody made fun of her. So she never went back. So she's, she's completely illiterate. She doesn't, you know, so he teaches her to read and then they become each other's first loves, which was pretty nice. I actually really enjoyed reading about their relationship and I was happy for her that she had Tate for a certain amount of time. I think it was really important for her to kind of like have that um, close interpersonal relationship with somebody where she, like, she could talk to him and spend time with him and everything. Uh, not sure how well that worked out for her like in the future, because at the end of part two, 
Uh, the end of part two made me so sad. So Tate goes off to college and he promises Kaya that he's going to come back for her and like visit her and is going to continue to like maintain their relationship. But then like everybody else, he also abandons her and uh, it was just so sad. So he told her that he was going to come back in like July, but then he never shows. And then Kaya realizes that he's not coming back for her. And it was that was pretty hard to read. Like, honestly, <laughs> at the end of part one, I wasn't expecting to be so moved by her reaction to waiting for him to show up. Uh, so she just like realizes that he's not that he's abandoning her. Poor girl. So him not coming back made her even more withdrawn from people, which she already didn't really have much a relationship with anybody except for Jumpin' and Mabel and Tate. And so having Tate also kind of like abandon her really mess with her mind. It says for a month after July 4th, Kaya did not leave her place, did not go into the marsh or to jump in for gas or supplies. She lived on dried fish, mussels, oysters, grits, and greens. When all her shelves were empty, she finally motored to jump in for supplies, but didn't chat with him as usual, did her business and left him standing, staring after her, needing people ended and hurt. By the end of August, her life once more found its footing. Boat, collect, paint. Months passed. She only went to jump ins when low supplies demanded, but spoke very little to him. Her collections matured, da da da. Um, but as her collections grew, so did her loneliness. A pain as large as her heart lived in her chest. Nothing eased it. Not the gulls, not the splendid sunset, not the rarest of shells. Months turned into a year. The lonely became larger than she could hold. She wished for someone's voice, presence, touch, but wished more to protect her heart. Months passed into another year, then another. And I was just so sad for her because like, you know, like hu human connection and like, you know, physical touch and like having someone to talk to is so important. And so it's just like for years, she's just alone. So surprising to me at the end of part one, reading that I was crying. Like <laughs> I, I, I like when books can move me to tears. Like I really did just feel like the ultimate heartbreak for her. Uh, it just made me so sad. So then we move into part two and uh, Kaya is now 19 and local town fuckboy Chase Andrews takes notice of her. Um, if you recall, Chase is the name of our murder victim. They start seeing each other um, casually for him, less casually for her. They're together for over a year. Um, and we see her just continue to live her life in the marsh alone, aside from visits from Chase whenever he feels like it. So I already didn't like Chase from um, the murder investigations from part one. <sighs> he just like, he seemed, you know the type. It was just uh, annoying to me because all of the people in the town kept being like, oh no, the, the high school quarterback, not the high school quarterback died. And it's like, Oh my gosh, you guys are adults. If I never have to hear like an adult man talk about how great a high school student is at football, like that'll be too soon. Like I, I hate that whole like dynamic. I think it's weird. I think it's creepy. I think it's weird to have a whole town be like, oh my gosh, he's so good at football. Like it was just weird. So basically like, you know that the town like loves him. They kind of know that he's not a good person, but he was good at football when he was in high school. So therefore everybody likes him. And we get to know him in part two of the book. And it just made me sad. Kaya is so naive since she's never had any socialization besides, you know, like, her family when she was very young and then Mabel and jump in, which she really only saw when she needed like supplies. And then Tate, which, you know, she had like her first love with him, but that obviously ended in this horrible heartbreak for her. So she's never really had any like 
great positive interactions with men. And since she's been alone for so long, you know, especially after Tate left, it's been years at this point, she was so desperate for human connection that it felt like she was just kind of like going along with it, going along with whatever Chase wanted. And I felt awful for Kaya because she really, it felt like she didn't have like any way of understanding what was happening. Like Chase made her think that they had this future together and he would promise her love and marriage and a home. But it was obvious to the reader that this was never going to happen. Like as the reader, like you know the type, like he's basically just going to keep her a secret forever. You know, he, he goes and he has his life in town and then whenever he feels like Seeing his marsh girl, he goes out into the marsh and pays her a visit, stays for a few days, and then says see ya and goes back to his real life. So we know that he's doing this, and um, this is also confirmed because Flash is to like his murder, like after and when everybody's talking about him in town, like the whole town knew that he was a player. Like he slept around with a bunch of women and he was, I think they said he was sleeping around on his wife. So like, I don't think as the reader, we were ever meant to like him, which happened. Like the more I read parts with him in it, the less I cared about his death and the less I wanted to know the mystery of it. Um, I just kept longing for like the first part of the book before Chase was introduced into her life. Um, like there were many times that I wish that this was just like a coming of age story without the whole murder mystery tie in. <laughs> Cause I was just kind of like, I don't know. I liked part one minus the investigation parts better than part two. So also during part two, during Kaya's relationship with Chase, Tate comes back into the picture. Um, and then we like learn from his point of view that he had abandoned Kaya because he didn't think that she would ever be able to fit into his life. But then as he got older, he changed his mind and he regretted leaving her, which is difficult because I actually liked Tate as a character. He shouldn't have done what he did, but he was, he was a kid, but you know, still he was an asshole, but Regardless, so Tate went to her and tried to warn her that Chase was just the town fuckboy and he was seeing every other woman in town. And then Kaya, and Kaya was like, I don't believe you. But then Kaya got confirmation of this when she had purchased a newspaper that she, um, well, so first she went into town and she saw him with a group of his friends with his arm around another woman. And it was super weird because like, it was just, the interaction was super awkward and he's just kind of like, oh, hey, Kaya. <laughs> and so they like, basically he's like, oh, you know, I just don't want to, I don't, he, he keeps telling her that he doesn't want her to meet like his family and like his friends and everything because he doesn't want to like make her uncomfortable because he knows she's not good in social situations. Like he's doing her a favor. So clearly this character, I just, I did not like him. So, She's in town, she sees him, they go their separate ways. She goes into her, her store to do her shopping. She purchases a newspaper and in this newspaper, when she gets home and she's reading it, she gets confirmation that Tate was right because of course he was, because Tate actually goes to town. Um, there's an engagement announcement in the newspaper for Chase and this other woman. So Kaya has this moment of realization that she is alone and then she further throws herself into this great distrust of people which was destined to happen because she's been burned time and time again so obviously she's not going to keep seeing chase she doesn't want to keep being like that marsh girl that he just comes and sees whenever he feels like it he wouldn't accept that she didn't want to see him anymore and then this caused further problems for her down the line so moving forward, she does go through somewhat starting to speak to Tate again and kind of like kind of building that trust back up again with him again. Um, so throughout her life, since she was a child, Kaya has been documenting about the marsh. Um, she's really talented at painting um, and she's collecting samples and everything like that. Um, Tate goes over to her shack and sees that her collection has like expanded, which we learned about in part one, like her collection expanded because of her loneliness. Tate has this idea to take her findings and he submits them to a publisher. 
Um, and then she begins to be a published author writing books and illustrating books about the marsh, which is great for her because now all of her money problems are solved. She starts fixing up the shack. Like life really seems to be like kind of turning around for her, you know, like she's able to still be isolated in the marsh that she loves, but she gets to document about it. And she seems very content with her life. So now kind of going into the whole murder aspect of the story. See, wouldn't the story just have been, I don't personally, wouldn't the story have been just nice if we could have just had like this, I don't know, this nice story of her, like, not nice, but like, this, this heartbreaking story of her growing up in the marsh and like, you know, like being alone and being re resilient and like having this happy ending of like being a published author now and like life's so great, but like, I don't know, we have to throw in this murder mystery stuff. I, I didn't love it. So throughout this murder investigation, it was determined that that marsh girl, Kaya, is the suspect in the murder. Um, Many chapters of part two were uh, chapters on the murder trial. I found these chapters to be very boring and taxing. Mainly my problem with them being that we already knew so much of the evidence of what was going to be presented at the trial. And so having to read line by line of dialogue talking about this evidence at the trial just seemed so redundant. Prior, we already learned that her possible motive for this murder could have been that she was like a lover scorned, slash also he had um, assaulted her and tried to sexually assault her. Um, and some fishermen had saw this happen. So they thought that maybe, you know, that could be her motive. Um, there was Chase's, he always wore a shell necklace and she had given him this necklace. Um, when his body was found, the necklace was missing. It was never to be found. Um, there were red fibers from a hat that the police found that was in her shack. The red fibers were found on his jacket. Um, but then at the time of the murder, she was confirmed to have been in a different town. Um, she was having a meeting with her publisher but during the trial, it was argued that during that night, she could have taken a bus from this town that was like two hours away back to the town, killed him, and then bust back in the morning, had breakfast with her publisher, and then went back and then got told of the murder and was like, oh no. Um, but like I said, we already read a lot of these passages regarding them figuring out all this evidence and talking to the townspeople and piecing it all together. So the parts of the trial just were so repetitive and it didn't hold my attention because it was basically just kind of like a recap of the first half of the book. Like just being like, oh yeah, and remember this. Oh yeah, and remember this. And it's like, I already know all this. Why do I need to reread it twice? So Kaya is held in jail for two months. Um, she doesn't have possibility of bail because she kept trying to escape the police. <laughs> she kept like running from them um, and not, wasn't willing to like talk to them or even be brought in. Eventually they did, obviously. Like I said, we have all these chapters about the trial. Um, it was believed that she was going to possibly be found guilty because the town was very like prejudiced against her for being the Marsh girl. Um, they were all kind of like <laughs> weirded out by her and everything. And so that was a concern. Um, but she ended up not being found guilty. The evidence against her just didn't support it being possible for her to have done this. You know, they were like, oh, she was in a different town. Like, was it really possible for her to go back and do this? And she was such a quiet, um, reserved person. But the truth is she did do it. She went through the entirety of the rest of her life um, of people just accepting that she didn't do it and then truly believing that she was innocent. Um, she lived out the rest of her life. Her and Tate reconciled. Um, they lived the rest of their lives together in her shack. Um, she kept doing her marsh stuff and doing books and just living in the marsh. And it wasn't until after her death when she was 64 
that Tate discovered the truth. Conveniently, at the very end of the book, after she's passed, Tate discovers some hidden items that she had below the floorboards, which is just like, he, I don't know, he's just like looking around the shack and is like, that looks different. And it's like, you've lived here for like 40 years and you never noticed what you've just noticed like the day after you buried her. And that just seemed a little convenient for me. But he bends the floorboard, takes out the items. He finds Chase's missing necklace and then poems that Kaya had written. So throughout the book, we got like these little like poems that Kaya would like recite by this author, you know, don't really think much about it. Turns out that she's the author. So the author's name was Amanda Hamilton. The poems were pretty frequent-ish and I didn't, I didn't really, I don't know, I kind of, I, I skimmed over them and sometimes skipped them entirely because I just wasn't into it. <laughs> and Tate shared that, um, <laughs> Tate shared that opinion with me. I thought this was funny. All the envelopes were marked with the initials A.H. and from them he pulled out pages and pages of poetry by Amanda Hamilton, the local poet who had published simple verses in regional magazines. Tate had thought Hamilton's poems rather weak, but Kaya, had, Kaya always saved the published clippings um, and here were the envelopes full of them. And I agree, I think the poems were rather weak. But he realizes that um, the all of these poems, and there's some that were unpublished that were in Kaya's handwriting. He realizes that this was the pseudonym that Kaya's, Kaya's been using and she's been publishing these poems, all except one poem, which is called The Firefly. And it laid out the murder. So let me read this for you. The Firefly. Luring him was as easy as flashing valentines. But like a lady firefly, they hid a secret call to die. A final touch, unfinished. The last step, a trap. Down he falls, his eyes still holding mine. Until they see another world. I saw them change. First a question, then an answer. Finally an end. And love itself passing. To whatever it was before it began. So that poem I actually thought was pretty good. Um, so Tate destroys all these items. And basically the murder mystery of Chase is going to be a mystery for the town forever. So she got away with murder. I have to say that I was um, somewhat surprised that the story ended that way. Um, but at the same time, once it happened, I was like, that makes sense. But I believe that she did it um, because she saw it as a justified murder. She saw that it was the only way that she could escape Chase and move on with her life without living in fear of him um, because she knew from his previous actions that he was never going to leave her be and she didn't want to fall into um, like this cycle of being a victim of abuse like her mother had previously. So now in 2022, this book has been adapted into a movie. I was going to see the movie um, and I was going, my plan, my original plan was to have this video be like a book versus movie video. But then I finished the book and like, I don't know, honestly, I just ended up not wanting to see the movie. Um, I didn't really want to take the time to sit in a theater for it. I didn't really want to have to pay to go see it in theaters. Um, I had the thought that like maybe if it gets released on like a streaming platform that I'll watch it but it just didn't really seem worth a theater trip to me. I did watch the trailer for it. The trailer makes the movie seem a little like lifetime-y and I don't really love lifetime movies. Um, it does look really beautiful though. Um, I, I would like seeing the movie for the visuals because I did, when I was reading the book, I did have troubles visualizing the marshes and like her surroundings. I don't feel like the author did a super great job of describing what the whole like environment looked like. And I did really struggle with that. So I think that the movie would do really well for being able to have that visual and like actually see this environment that she was, um, you know, immersed in. But like I said, I didn't go see the movie. But yeah, overall, I am glad that I actually took the time to read the book um, to kind of see like 
what the hype was all about. I didn't actually know what the story was about going into it. I didn't, I, you know, I hadn't really paid much attention to it, like all those years that it was on lists and like on store shelves and everything like that. So I am actually happy that I took the time to read the book. Um, I thought it was moving. Um, I thought that it was, you know, it had its moments, like I said, like it had its moments of things where I was like, Ugh. but it also had its moments of things that I really enjoyed. So that's kind of a tough one for me. So that is it for today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you want, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.